Microsoft is betting the farm on Windows 10 and here's the flagship end of the mobile offering. The Lumia 950 and 950 XL have 5.2 inch and 5.7 inch AMOLED QHD screens but are otherwise essentially identical with glance, clear black display, 2015 20 megapixel sensors with large f over 1.9 apertures, phase detection autofocus and triple LED flash. Almost unique among flagships is that you can swap out the battery and expand storage with microSD plus there's Qi wireless and quick charge compatibility too over a USB type C connector. Both with liquid cooling, the XL variant has a Snapdragon 810 chipset, the vanilla 950 and 808, and both have a full 3 gigabytes of RAM. 3,000 and 3,300 milliamp hour batteries should keep these phones going through a full day easily. Innovations include iris recognition and support for a secondary display, the continuum feature whereby the phone can expand its apps to a full PC experience. Google also held its big annual event announcing the LG-made Nexus 5X and Huawei-made Nexus 6P. The Nexus 5X is almost disappointing in its price spec proposition with minimal bump over the two-year-old Nexus 5. A 5.2-inch LCD 1080p display, the same 2GB of RAM, max of 32GB of internal storage plus a mono speaker. Sigh. On the bright side, it does come with Android 6 out of the box as a Snapdragon 808 chipset and a fast fingerprint sensor for playing with Android Pay and general authentication. There's also a next-gen camera rated at 12 megapixel with an f over 2.0 aperture and 1.55 micron pixel size. Lack of OAS and lack of Qi wireless charging are both disappointments, but I'll have to reserve judgment on this until the review handset arrives. The Nexus 6P looks and acts more premium with more RAM, stereo speakers, bigger screen, all in a metal unibody design. Which one did I pre-order? Darn it, the 5X. Oh well, I'll try to get a look at the 6P too. Don't worry. Reviewing this, the Moto X style after the launch of the two new Nexuses, uh, Nexi or just Nexus, from Google, proves somewhat surreal since the Motorola devices of the last couple of years have also been Nexus and all but name with the same Android and with just a few Motorola utilities over the top. Putting comparisons with the Nexus uh, 6P and Nexus 6 in particular definitely in the frame. And I venture to suggest the X style might even come out on top, despite being cheaper in most markets. The Nexus 6 was too large, everyone now agrees, no matter all its other lovely features. The new 5X is a little too unambitious, while the 6P has, shall we say, unique styling. So why not consider this the Moto X style in the same vein for anyone who's Android through and through? This device's very name in the USA is the Moto X Pure Edition, perhaps emphasising that it's virtually untouched from Google's vision for the UI and applications. Plus, it's 5mm shorter and, crucially, 7mm narrower at 76mm than the monster Nexus 6 83mm, all the while delivering a gorgeous screen that's less than 0.3 inch smaller on its diagonal. Again, relative to the Nexus 6 with the same magnificent front-mounted stereo speaker. Here's a demo. A game from the late 70s, I think. This is Jean-Michel Jarre. Wonderful quality. And in full stereo. Very, very crisp. Very, very crisp and pretty loud. So this should be all win then. This is the sister device, the Moto X Play, which I reviewed back in Phone Joe 258. But whereas the Play was centered around maximizing battery life, the style concentrates on looking good, sounding good, and performing to the max, and it generally succeeds. The design language is very familiar now, the metal chassis, plastic inserts, and molded textured back feeling great in the hand and providing maximum space for battery capacity. In some markets, you can even use Motorola's maker service to customize your own style in their factories, choosing almost every external element. But in most world markets, you'll have to make do with black and gray as here or white and champagne. The black's perfect though, understated, and as they say, it goes with everything. Around the rest of the frame are Motorola's trademark thin side buttons, a quick charge 2.0 compatible micro USB port, a 3.5mm headphone jack on the top and a single pop-out tray combining micro SIM and micro SD. 
It's a slightly bizarre arrangement whereby each sits on the opposite side of the tray, but it's economical with space and along with Huawei's similar approach seems to be the way the industry is heading. Hey, at least there is storage expansion, unlike on the recent Samsung flagships. And unlike the utterly broken micro SD support on the G range, the X Play and the X Style here both recognized my standard 64 gigabyte micro SD card of media instantly, which was a great relief. The 5.7 inch QHD display is interesting that it's LCD and not AMOLED this time around for the X, but you still get all the notifications at a glance facilities that debuted on the original X, wherein anything that comes in gets popped up in icon form on the screen as you either pick the phone up from, for example, a table or just wave your hand over the front proximity sensor. You can then opt to slide up on any icons to see more details and ultimately into the application that they came in from, for example, Gmail. Uh, QHD is becoming de rigueur on any screen of over 5.2 inches and sounds over the top until you realise it's just 1440p, i.e. less than half as much again in terms of resolution over the established 1080p displays of most top 5-inch screen smartphones. Contrast and visibility outdoors is excellent, up with the very best displays from around the industry. It's crisp and impressive with fairly neutral colours even when colour mode in settings is set to vibrant. I've already mentioned the size advantages over the likes of the Nexus 6, and I can't emphasize this too much. Don't switch off just because you see a screen size quoted at 5.7 inches with incredibly small side bezels. The Moto X style feels very manageable in the hand, and I'd be happy using it as my main smartphone day to day. On the back is a 21 megapixel f over 2.0 camera inset into metal detailing, very nice, along with a two tone LED flash. Driven by the powerful Snapdragon 808 chipset, this produces very decent photos in all light conditions, with some examples shown here. Performance, especially in HDR mode, was much better than on the Moto X Play, which in theory shares the same optics and sensor. I suspect the difference is partly down to software updates since my X Play review, and then partly also down to the much greater power available for image processing here. Focusing was fast and reliable and good light though, as you might expect. Uh, in low light, it's much slower since the phase detection autofocus here is still optical and relies on enough light to work properly. The video is captured at 4K without the Moto X style getting too hot, thankfully. Though there's no built-in way to grab 8 megapixel stills from footage, you still have to rely on third-party tools like Androvid to do this instead. The default is a more sensible 1080p, mind you, resulting in much smaller video files. And disappointingly, despite the presence of at least three microphones around the case, video sound is only captured in mono. Maybe this can be fixed in a future software update. The front-facing camera is 5 megapixels and even comes with its own LED flash, though this understandably is somewhat blinding in use, and turning flash off in the settings also means it's turned off for the rear camera. I'd have liked to have seen separate settings for each camera mode. Still, again, it's an easy software fix. As with the Moto X Play, it's virtually stock Android. I equipped and set up like a Nexus, updated regularly, and with just a few Moto tweaks over the top. There's the Moto application suite, introducing a double twist gesture for starting the camera, which makes you look a little odd, but does work. Plus, a slightly dangerous double karate chop to launch the torch function. Dangerous to others should they be in the way, but mainly dangerous to your phone in case you should let it slip to the ground in the process. You also get the higher end voice stuff here too, thanks to the chipset used and thanks to Motorola's own low power DSP, you can say, even with the screen off. Hey there, Moto X, or whatever you've taught it. And then you're off into Google Now territory, though with a Motorola wrap around it, which can delay results annoyingly. Elsewhere, the Moto X style, like all other Motorola Android devices, is thankfully Nexus-like in terms of bundled applications, including the full Google suite here, of course, the notification shade here. Also, Google now off to the left of the main home screen, all making for a familiar experience and removing barriers from Motorola, keeping the firmware bang up to date. The Moto X style is all about hitting top specs with <coughs> style without requiring a top end price. And the Snapdragon 808 inside combined with the three gig of RAM and the QHD screen produce an experience that's almost identical to that on the also Motorola made Google Nexus 6, in other words, top notch. 
Internal storage here on my review device was 32 gigabyte, of which somewhere around 23 were available out of the box. Now there is a catch, unfortunately, to all of this, and it's battery life. With a 3000 milliamp hour sealed cell and with no Qi wireless charging, sadly, the QHD 3 gig of RAM 808 combination drives the Moto X style into the ground faster than you may be expecting. Use this device intensively, for example, on a big day out and you'll be out of power by tea time, guaranteed. Now, wireless charging would have helped by letting you achieve quick top ups with no inconvenience. But Motorola has a different plan. It has given the X style turbo power. Effectively, Motorola is named for Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0. Uh, using higher voltages in a very controlled way from a compatible charger to help charge the phone battery much more quickly. There is one big omission here, of course, compared to other flagships. There's no fingerprint or other biometric security feature. This doesn't prevent you from getting involved in Android Pay and other similar schemes, but it does mean that you'll have to use, for example, a pin on the screen, and then you're not really saving time in a shop checkout compared to a debit card. <laughs> It really does feel like with the style or the pure edition, if you're in the USA, Motorola has fully rounded out the vision for the original X. The form factor, the capabilities, the software loadout, the imaging, the media playback are all stunning, especially for the price. In the UK, the Moto X style retails at about £360, including VAT, significantly undercutting a number of big brand competing flagships with the caveat that you'll need to be prepared to do a little plugging in each day for turbo power top ups. It's hard to think of a better all round package than this, the Moto X style, and it's terrific value overall. Recommended. Another brief look at some of my favourite products from my part time sponsors over at ProPorter. I'll only talk up stuff I've actually tried, don't worry. For a change, I wanted to do a rapid fire run through. Uh, these ultra premium tangle free flat micro USB charge and sync cables. What a title with integral ties. And you've got to love the colors. Lovely at a five reach. This Beach Boy for all five inch screen smartphones, including the iPhone 6 and 6S. Terrific water and sandproof product at £15. I've used these on several family holidays. iPhone owners in particular are well served by some top fashion brands and premium materials with Ted Baker cases in use by my wife and daughter and Barber slimline protective cases here. Not the cheapest cases around, but you'll enjoy picking them up every day. The Mohawk Turbocharger 8000 isn't as cheap as alternatives on Amazon, but it's perfectly sized to fit in any pocket, will charge your smartphone several times over, and you can personalize it from the factory with, for example, Steve's charger, hands off or whatever. Anyway, ProPorter are British, they support charities, and promo code JOINUS still seems to work, giving up to 10% off any order. Plus, free shipping means you should be able to get a very satisfactory deal over at proporter.co.uk.